The Andy Cine C5 is an ultra bright, powerful monitor with many jam packed features from auto dimming, waveforms, HDMI wireless transmitter, and more. But what is the most impressive thing about this monitor is the brightness of the screen is able to hit 3000 nits. But the real question is, is this the last budget monitor you will ever need or will the fan noise and heating issues gonna be this monitor's downfall? Recently, Andy Cine sent me over the Andy Cine C5 5.0 inch ultra bright monitor to review. I was not paid by Andy Cine to do this review, so my opinion will be as honest as possible. What comes in this box is a sturdy carrying case for the monitor, the camera monitor mount, which is actually pretty impressive, the manual, an Allen wrench, and finally the monitor. On top of the monitor is the power on and off button, which also controls the touch screen as well. One scroll wheel that can navigate the menu, HDMI in and out, DC power in and out to either power the monitor or to use the monitor to power your camera. And lastly, an SD card reader to install LUTs and firmware updates. What I was really impressed by was everything they jam packed into this camera monitor from waveforms, auto dimming, automatic rotating, false colors, peaking, histogram, and there's just actually a lot of more features in it. I haven't been able to test all of them yet, but I'm still playing with everything. After testing it for a few days, there is actually a lot I have to stay. So let's kind of start with some of those pros. This monitor is actually coming around 250 to that $300 price range. And honestly, it is well worth the price for what you're getting. One thing that I'm actually most excited to test later in the future is the wireless HDMI transmitter for a director's monitor or more likely a pulling focus with a first AC. Now with all of those great pros comes a couple of cons starting with the heat. This monitor does get hot since it is a really bright monitor at 3000 nits. The monitor does heat up and get pretty hot but out of all my testing I had no overheating issues throughout my testing. With that being said the power input from this monitor comes from the drawbacks like fan noises, battery uh, life and not being able to turn off the auto brightness settings yet. In the user options you are able to actually go to display setup and then from there you can control and change the auto brightness and have full control. Also something that I found out was that if you set your backlight or the brightness to 100, it will not let you go on the fan speed lower than 70, which I thought was cool because it prevents overheating from happening. Those are a couple things that I did notice when I was doing a little bit more testing and something that I just missed out. Completely messed up in the talking portion. So I was wrong right before I was about to talk about the auto brightness. It's actually a lot better and it makes me love this monitor a lot lot more all right i'll let myself get back to the talking now let's talk about that battery life it's all right it's what i expect it to be being a 3000 nit monitor it is really really bright so i kind of expected it to be okay it's not great doesn't last for hours but it does last a good amount of time now my last con for this monitor is it actually did not work when i got it when I was trying to connect this monitor to my camera, the Panasonic G9, I was shooting 4K 24 frames 10 bit and 60 frames 8 bit modes, which did not work for some reason connecting to this monitor. I didn't know if this had to do with the 30 hertz and 60 hertz. This monitor did state that it doesn't read 60 hertz, which I believe that might have been the case, but the exact same modes on a Blackmagic Pocket 4K was able to connect to this monitor, so I had no real reason why but i did do a firmware update and that was a little complicated to get you have to do one of two things try to find the firmware update on their website on their blog or email them directly and wait for a response to get that firmware update being a little bit of a headache and trying to figure out that entire process after the update i was able to show and use this monitor actually with my 4k 24 and 60 frames a second on this monitor all in all though this monitor is actually pretty great not only for the brightness, but the professional features are in it as well. Now, who would I recommend this monitor for? I would recommend this to anyone that is looking for a monitor that is a great budget and great bang for your buck, that's professional, has lots of specs, really bright, and is okay to deal with some of those few quirks and workarounds like the gaff tape, for example. 
This will be my new workhorse monitor and I plan on using it. But if you wanna check out my entire camera rig with this monitor included, check out this video right here. And until next week, guys, peace.